What's going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 32 of the Bristol Rovers Karimo series. And in this episode we're going into our first game against Charlton Athletic. Need I remind you that we did play them earlier on, I'm pretty sure, in the season. And uh, that was in the J-Paint Trophy, I think. I'm, I'm not 100% sure actually, but we're going into this game. They're currently in second place. They've um, overtaken Barnsley in into second place. They've come out of nowhere really. I didn't really notice them in the table till now. Uh, but we get things started very nicely here with Ryan Brunt having a shot from outside the box. But unfortunately, the goalkeeper matches it with a great save. Really good fingertip save there, otherwise that probably would have been parried into his own net if he didn't see it coming. And uh, we get a corner from that though in the ninth minute and uh, yeah, we are going to be taking it with Ryan Gould because he's got very, very good crossing. But his finishing is pretty abysmal, that's for sure. And it's really shown uh, very recently that his finishing is only 50. But luckily we do manage to score off of the corner. Not from a header, but from a rebound. We managed to pick up the ball with Mats Clayton and slot it into the back of the net. Don't know what the defence was doing there. They were kind of backing off and backing off. And uh, that was why I decided to take the shot. And uh, I think I did not make the defender in the process. I'm not 100% sure if I can see it from this angle. Yeah, I think I did not make him. And uh, that's why the goalkeeper didn't really see it. And that's why it was such an easy finish for Mats Clayton. Finally ending his goal drought. He's really not scored that much recently. And um, it's been a little bit disappointing, really, because I do need a backup striker um, to Ryan Brunt, who can actually score goals. And for the moment, or for, for the time being, it's only been Ryan Brunt that's actually scored all the goals. And that's not what you want in a team, for sure. Because if you have that, then you're in a bit of trouble, really, because... When it comes to them getting injured, because they will eventually get injured, there's no way that they can't stay injured unless they have the injury-free trait. But when it comes to them getting injured, you're going to really struggle to get goals. But you can see there that Charlton do manage to level it up from a cruel rebound off of the post. And uh, the goalkeeper wasn't in sight, so that is exactly why it went in. And a uh, really poor volley there from Clayton. Despite the fact that he'd scored earlier on in the match, that was really disappointing there. Maybe I should have, uh, maybe that was my fault, to be honest. I probably should have taken a bit more of a touch before going for goal. Uh, but nevertheless, Widdison's on the ball here. He's a really good fullback. I do enjoy him a lot. Tries to cross it in, but it is deflected out for another corner. I think this was the third or fourth corner that we'd already had in this game. And once again, I give it to Ryan Gould to cross this ball in. And uh, it does find the head of Tom Parks there, but it comes back out. And really poor defending, to be honest. And uh, Max Clayton scores a very, very nice goal to make it 2-1 there. And uh, put us back into the lead just before half-time. That was a really easy goal, though, uh, from Max Clayton. Ryan Gould with a fantastic delivery into the box. And unfortunately, our defender, Tom Parks, couldn't quite finish that off. But who is there at the back post to intercept? Of course, it's Max Clayton scoring a very nice little finesse shot. Past the keeper with his right foot into the back of the net. And uh, you can see he's very, very happy there. And no wonder he's happy because he's finally broken the deadlock. And he's got his fourth goal in the Football League 1. So he's been playing very, very well recently. And hopefully he can carry that on. Because uh, the Brunt and Clayton combination last year was just deadly in the Football League 2. And uh, I want to carry that on into the Football League 1. But we do go into half-time 2-1 up. And uh, Charlton Athletic weren't going to weren't going to let me come away with an easy victory, that's for sure. Their goalkeeper was pretty immense and they were very lethal on the counter-attack for sure. And uh, Barnsley are winning their game against Oldham Athletic there, 2-0. So this game was really a priority to try and win. And uh, I think I do actually take off Ryan Gould there. I'm not 100% sure. I'm doing this thing again where I look for the player who has the lowest rating um, overall at half-time and uh, take off the player that's just not doing that well. But um, I actually don't take anyone off there. I don't know why I uh, went through all of that. But anyway, we're going on into the second half, into the 48th minute. Have a shot with Ryan Brunt outside the box. But unfortunately, the goalkeeper makes a great save. That is a good save right there. And it was a powerful shot, but an even better save because the goalkeeper did come off his line. 
Probably should have finessed it round the keeper, although I doubt it would have gone into the back of the net and got enough power on it. But nevertheless, we get the corner again with Ryan Gould, and uh, we cross this one in, and Ryan Gould does get the assist from Tom Parks' header, I'm pretty sure that was. And uh, Tom Parks managed to score a goal to make it 3-1, despite the fact that um, Ryan, uh, Ryan Brunt missed the chance earlier on. Tom Parks manages to tuck the chance away with a header and capitalise on that horrible miss, because... I'm, I, the reason I say it's horrible is because Ryan, Gould, uh, Ryan Brunt has scored from harder positions in in his Bristol Rovers career, and that's that is for certain. And uh, well, you can see there that that one almost went into the back of the net. I would have been devastated if that had happened because the defence was just a bit derpy, and so was the goalkeeper. But nevertheless, we do go on the counter attack. We cross it in. Matt's Clayton for the hat trick, but no, it just goes wide. That would have been a great goal to score. And uh, it was a really good assist. Well, it would have been a really good assist from Emile Sinclair, finding the run of um, finding the run of Max Clayton into the box. But unfortunately, we couldn't quite get it there. But Emile Sinclair steals the ball, has a shot. My bad to shoot there because I really shouldn't have. Because considering um, his finishing isn't that great, I probably should have taken a touch first. But nevertheless, we do manage to get a fourth goal, and it did look like an emphatic victory. But really, it was slightly undeserved in my opinion. Charlton Athletic were a good side, but we were just taking all our chances and punishing them for everything. It's a really nice through ball there uh, from John Joe Tool to pick out Max Clayton in space. And a great first-time volley as well with his right foot to complete his hat-trick. He has scored a hat-trick here and got his fifth goal in the uh, Football League 2 and uh, Football League 1. And finally, he's starting to do the work and uh, do some good stuff for us. And the game does end 4-1 to us, so a very, very emphatic result. And that does mean that we take our lead at the top of the table to three or four points now, I think. But I'm pretty sure that Barnsley did win their game. But Charlton Athletic will drop off to a, a fourth place because because of this emphatic victory. And uh, actually, we were pretty dominant in, in that game. You can see 10 shots, 9 on target to 7 shots on 3 on target. And uh, Barnsley got exactly the same scoreline, 4-1 against Oldham Athletic. But that doesn't affect our stance at the top of the table. We're still three points ahead of any other team. Uh, behind us, uh, Barnsley respectively, and uh, you can see that we're going into this, and Gerard Hughes has grown to 60 overall, and he now has the potential status, potential to be special. What? Wow. I, I don't know what to say, really. He is going to grow so quickly now. That's all I can say. I haven't really done a career mode where I've had so many youth players ready, and uh, Frank Doyle also has uh, shown great potential, which is also good. But I haven't really uh, done a uh, career mode before where I've had youth players and I'm actually playing them this consistently. So it'll be interesting to see how they grow. And uh, of course, I'm still a little bit worried about Ryan Gould. Let me know what I should do down in the comments section below about him, if I should loan him out in January and then recall him straight away. I don't know if I'll have enough money to do that, to be honest, which is a bit worrying because he's just not growing at all and I want him to grow. That's It's as simple as that. I don't know why there's this pot potential glitch on the game. It just doesn't make any sense and it just hinders my chances of you know, having fun with a player of this calibre, such as Ryan Gould, because he could grow to such a monster. But I'm just being restricted by the fact that EA have this little bug where when you buy certain players, they just don't grow to their potentials as they should do. And uh, that is starting to get very annoying as I did have that with Maximilian Meyer, despite the fact I was playing him in every single game in the QPR Carimo series. But anyway... You know, if there's anything that I can do, I will try and do something about it. But we are going into this game in the meantime against Scunthorpe United. And Scunthorpe are near the bottom of the table. They're not doing too well this season. So we've got a few easy fixtures coming up after this as well. Uh, so, you know, a good chance to get a fair few points. And uh, we start the game off very well there with Ryan Brunt. But the goalkeeper once again coming off of his line. It's very annoying when the goalkeeper does that. But he makes a great save in doing so. And uh, keeps the uh, score at 0-0. And uh, we get a corner off of this chance though. And Ryan Gould whips this one in. And it finds the head of Gary Kenneth. But unfortunately he couldn't quite turn it into the back of the net. 
And uh, then once again, we get another corner, putting lots of pressure on in the first 10 minutes. We cross this one in, and unfortunately, we couldn't get ahead on that on the second attempt, which is a bit disappointing. But anyway, a lovely through ball there from Max Clayton to Ryan Brunt. And in the 30th minute, we break the deadlock. We score, and a great assist there. Max Clayton providing a goal-scoring opportunity for Ryan Brunt, and he does take that every day of the week. What a strike that is past the goalkeeper. Kind of the moral of the story is don't bring the keeper out AI because that is what is going to happen, especially if Ryan Brunt's on the ball. Lovely weak footed shot into the top left hand corner with his left foot. Really good goal in hindsight, but this was Scunthorpe United and uh, they get very close there to scoring a header with Sparrow in uh, the 39th minute. I, I'm pretty sure they should have tucked that one away, but. Obviously, their strikers aren't clinical enough or their morale's not good enough, so they don't feel that they can score those kind of chances. But we get a very good chance, but the goalkeeper here saves it. Max Clayton's header just isn't powerful enough to get past the header or accurate enough. But into the second half, I foul a player, and I thought it would have been a free kick, but unfortunately, it was just inside the penalty area. How frustrating is that? Look at that. You can see the line there. It was just inside the penalty area. And you know what I'm like with penalties. This is going to be a real challenge for me because against the AI, I'm, I'm really crap at telling which way they will go. Although a lot of people have told me to stay down the middle and um, in the future that is something I will do because they do score off of that from going down the middle. But um, going from left to right uh, probably means that I'm not going to save it and uh, I don't save that penalty there. And an undeserved equaliser at Scunthorpe United means that it's Scunthorpe United 1, Bristol Rovers 1 and uh, very very disappointing because that is in fact how the game actually ended which is very disappointing we should have picked up the three points there and that does hinder our hinder our kind of uh, run at the top of the table but anyway guys if you have enjoyed this episode of career mode and want more career mode from me please like and subscribe It'd be really incredible if we could hit 35 likes for this episode. That would be much appreciated as always. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed the episode, like, subscribe for daily content. And I'll see you next time for another episode. Thanks for watching.